right, folks, I'm on page 51 of your interactive notebook, and we are going to do some notes today entitled Mole Ratios and Balanced Equations. So go ahead and set up page 51 for Cornell Notes, and we are going to talk about what is a mole ratio. But before we get into mole ratios, I'm going to go ahead and just review a little bit about a balanced equation. So, for example, if I have KClO3, and I heat that up, it will very naturally decompose into KCl and O2 gas. I know that those are the products because I had experimentally determined that those are the products. So I know that this is the right recipe for that reaction. But we have ratios that are off. In other words, this does not appear to obey the law of conservation of mass. I've got one potassium, one potassium, one chlorine, one chlorine, but then I've got three oxygen and two oxygen. So it appears, the way this is written, that one of my oxygens has disappeared. So in our last unit, we learned how to balance the equation. So I would make a list. Oops, not like that, though. I'll try again, Miss Crane. All right. So again, remember, put it in a box, put it in a box, put it in a box. Can't touch this. Then I'd make my list. I've got potassium, I've got chlorine, and I've got oxygen. Oh, Miss Crane. Focus, woman. There we go. All right. So I've got potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. And I'm going to start off on the left, and I'm just going to count how many of each. I've got one potassium, one chlorine, and three oxygens. On the right, I have one potassium, one chlorine, and two oxygens. Now remember what we have when we have the three and the two problem. Remember we need that least common multiple. So the least common multiple of two and three is going to be six. So on the left, I need to multiply the three by something to make it a six. Well, if I take and multiply a three by two, so I'm going to put a coefficient of 2 in front of my KClO3. That's going to change this to a 6. However, remember that applies to everything in the box that it's in front of. So that's going to change my chlorine to 2 and my potassium to 2. So that fixes that side of the oxygen. Let's fix the other side of the oxygen. I've got a 2 on the right, and I need that to be a 6. How do I make a 2 a 6? I'm going to multiply it by 3. So in front of the O2, I'm going to put a coefficient of 3. That's going to change my oxygens to 6. Now that looks good for the oxygens, and I fixed the problem with my oxygens, but I created a problem with my potassium and my chlorine. I've got 2 on the left for both, and I've got 1 on the right for both. So I'm going to multiply the KCl by a 2 coefficient in front, which is going to change this to that. Okay, now let's talk about what that really means because you need to be able to see this in your head, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to be able to visualize what I mean when I say we've got two KClO3. So a KClO3 would have one potassium, and I'm going to draw him red. He would have one chlorine, and then he would have three oxygens. Now, this 2 coefficient in front means that I've got two of those molecules. So I'm going to draw a second one of those to represent my second KClO3. Okay. Now, on the other side, we need to be able to find where all of this comes apart. So we're going to take all of those pieces apart, and we're going to rearrange them. So I'm going to take this oxygen and this oxygen, and I'm going to use that to make an O2. Okay, so I use those. I'm going to take this oxygen and this oxygen, and I'm going to use those to make an O2. So I've used those. Then I've got two oxygens left. I've got this one up here and this one down here. I'm going to take those two oxygens and use those to make an O2. So how many oxygen molecules am I left with? Three. Okay, then I have this KCl right there. I'm just going to leave that just the way it is now that I've popped all the oxygens off of it. And that turns into KCl. And I have how many of those? Two of them. So I'm going to have two of my KCLs. Okay? This is just like a recipe for making something. All right? And the important thing that we really need to pay attention to are these coefficients that we added in front. These coefficients that we added in front are going to be what makes up what we call the mole ratio.
the mole ratio is the ratio of compounds in an equation. It is represented by the coefficients of the balanced equation. So the equation has to be balanced first or this isn't going to work because we need those coefficients that we use to balance it. So the mole ratio is a ratio of compounds in an equation, the coefficients of the balanced equation. So let's go back to the equation we just had. We had 2KClO3 reacts to form 2KCl plus 3O2. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that for every 2KClO3, there are to KCl and 3 oxygen. What do I do with this information? Okay, how do I use this information to help me? Well, let's say Miss Crane was trying to make something in the chemistry lab and she knows the recipe for how to make it, but she needs a specific amount in the end. I need, let's call it, three moles of O2. Well, if I need three moles of O2, I'm going to use two moles of KCl, O3, to make that. What if I need six moles of O2? What did I do to that number? I doubled it. So I'm going to need twice as much KCl, O3 to make that. Does that make sense? So this is just a ratio. So this is a two to two to three ratio. And I can double it. I can triple it. I can do a lot of things with it. Okay, now mole ratios can be used to talk about mole to mole relationships. So moles of A versus moles of B. So moles of one compound in the equation versus moles of the other compound in the equation. I could also talk about just straight molecules of A versus molecules of B. Okay, so I could talk about this many molecules of, of one substance versus this many molecules of the other substance. All right, and the last thing is if we have a gas, it's always going to be in liters. So if I'm talking about liters of a gas A versus liters of gas B. All right, so let me give you some examples of this. Here's my equation for the formation of water. H2 plus O2 yields H2O. Okay, this is a liquid, this is a gas, and this is a gas. All right, to balance this equation, okay, I've got two hydrogens on the left, one on the right. I'm going to put a two here. That changed my hydrogens to four, so I'm going to make these hydrogens a four. So there's my balance equation. So this is a two to one to two ratio, okay? So let's say that Miss Crane wanted to make seventeen moles of H two O. That's what, how much I want to make. My question is, how much hydrogen would that take? Well, I'm going to take that seventeen moles of H two O, and I'm going to use it as a given. And I know, according to this equation that for every two moles of H2O, there are two moles of H2. So for every two moles of H2O, there are two moles of H2. So how much hydrogen gas would I need? 17 times 2 divided by 2 would just be 17 moles of H2. All right, let's make it a little more complicated.
Let's say I want to make 8.79 moles of H2O. How much oxygen would that take? Well, according to my coefficients, there are 2 moles of water for every 1 mole of O2. So I would take my 8.79 divided by 2, and that would be 4 point, oh, that's cute, 4, Miss Crane, 4 point, three nine moles of O2. Okay, so that mole ratio is where we're going to end up with moles over moles. Okay, so mole ratio is going to be moles over moles in your equation. So when you're setting up the grid, you're going to see moles over moles. So here's a little trick that helps, because remember our rules, we've said the given always goes top left with units. Top left matches bottom right in units. Any equality can go in any column. The only place to go from grams is to moles. Moles always gets a 1, except if it's the mole ratio. Okay? So when we have moles over moles, what we're going to do is we're going to circle it, and we're going to label it mole ratio. Because this is the only time that moles isn't going to get a 1. So when we're setting up our grid and we've got moles over moles, that's the only time that moles is not going to get a 1. You're going to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. We're going to talk a ton more about this tomorrow. I just wanted you guys to have a little bit of an intro to it today. So feel free to look at the example problems and see if any of them make sense, but we will go over them tomorrow in class. Thanks for watching.